In this video, we explain colligative properties of electrolyte solutions. All right, colligative properties is a concept that we introduced when we were describing non-electrolyte solutions as those that depend uh, on not what the chemical nature of the solute is in a solution, but only on the amount of solute that you have in that solution. There were three types of uh, colligative properties that we uh, studied. And one of them, uh, the first one was the uh, freezing point depression of the solvent. Uh, the other one was the boiling point elevation of a solution that contains a solute. And then uh, the last one was the osmotic pressure. Okay, so uh, to recall what we did with non electrolyte solutions, the change to the freezing point, the decrease in the freezing point, was directly proportional to the molality of the solution. Okay, through, uh, and the proportional weighted constant was a cryoscopic constant. Okay, uh, the change in the boiling point, which is a boiling point elevation, was also proportional to the molality of the solution okay, through a constant that we call the uh, ebullioscopic constant of the solvent. And finally, the osmotic pressure was directly proportional to the molarity of the solution. And the proportionality constants were R on the temperature. Right, so again, these were the colligative properties for uh, non-electrolytes. The question is, how does this get modified when we study, study uh, electrolyte solutions? Right, so again, electrolytes are, uh, electrolyte solutions are going to be formed by ions. Okay, and when we put, for example, sodium chloride in solution, uh, if this is an aqueous solution, then sodium chloride is going to fully dissociate to generate uh, chloride ions and sodium ions. Okay? This will be a uh, table salt, the solid. Right, so when we actually, we actually uh, recognize right away that when we put this salt in solution, there's more particles than uh, you had before the solution uh, uh, that can modify the properties of that solution. Okay, uh, uh, so for example, if you put one mole of sodium chloride uh, in, in a volume of water, then you're actually going to have two moles of ions generated uh, uh, in the solution. And because colligative properties only depend on the amount, not the nature, of the solute, then uh, the fact that you have twice as many ions than you had before the solution, or that you would have for, for a non-electrolyte, okay, that means that these expressions have to be modified uh, to again accommodate for the fact that you have more species generally in a non-electrolyte solution than you have in a non-electrolyte solution. Right, so uh, the way that these expressions get modified is very simple. It's just with a factor which is called the Van Hoff factor, which, ac uh, which accounts for uh, however many uh, species you have in solution. Okay, that's uh, simply the, uh, the definition. Okay, so this Van Hoff factor uh, uh, we can calculate using the following expression. Okay, this is the number of species that you have in solution over the number of species that you have before solution. So for example, if we take sodium chloride, okay, the number of species that you have before solution would be 1, and the number of species that you have after solution is 2. So then the Van Hoff factor is equal to 2, again, for sodium chloride. Okay, that would be 2 over 1. Okay, again, for every molecule of sodium chloride that you have dissolving, you are going to generate 2 ions. Okay, so the Van Hoff factor will not be 1, but 2. Right, so again, what this means is that uh, a solution of sodium chloride would send uh, a given molality is actually going to have twice as large a freezing point depression, twice as large a boiling point elevation, and twice as large uh, an osmotic pressure than if you actually dissolve something that does not generate ions, for example, glucose or sucrose. Okay, so that's uh, what, the, uh, what the whole factor does for you. So this looks uh, like a trivial man and manipulation of the uh, expressions for osmotic pressure uh, or for colligative properties in general, and, and it is. There's, there's not, nothing more complicated about it than this. Now, uh, something that we can actually uh, do in addition to this is relate the um, Van Hoff factor to something that is called the degree of dissociation of the salt. Okay, so uh, let's see what this degree of dissociation is. The degree of dissociation of the salt is um, called alpha, and alpha is equal to the Van Hoff factor minus one over nu minus one, where nu is the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients of the ionic species in solution. Okay, so let's actually uh, try to see what this means for uh, dissolved calcium chloride. Right? 
calcium chlorate as a solid, you put in a solution and then you're going to be generating uh, calcium ions and uh, two chloride ions, which are now in an aqueous solu solution. All right. Uh, this uh, stoichiometric coefficient, sum of the stoichiometric coefficient of the uh, ions, is just going to be 1 plus 2, right? So this new would be 3. And the degree of dissociation tells you uh, uh, how, what is the percent or the fraction of calcium chloride that is dissociated. Plus, calcium chloride under some conditions does not dissociate fully, it will only dissociate partially. Okay, so that means that uh, if you don't have full dissociation, you're not going to get as many ions in solution as you would expect. That means that this uh, uh, I is not simply going to be 3, it's going to be something smaller than that. Okay, so for example, let's assume that this calcium, calcium chloride is only 50% dissociated. Okay, that would mean that alpha is equal to 0 0.5. Right, so the question is, well, what is the one hot factor that we have to use for this uh, salt that is only partially dissociated so that we can calculate then uh, the colligative properties? Well, uh, we know that for calcium chloride, that uh, uh, knew that the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients of the ions is equal to 3. So then uh, we just have to solve for the Van Hoff factor. Okay, so we'll look at that 0 0.5 is going to be equal to I minus 1 over 3 minus 1. All right, so then uh, we can solve for I. But right here you have 2 multiplied by 1 half is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So I is equal to 2. All right. Now this is interesting because it tells you the following. Look, uh, if this salt was fully dissociated, you would expect that Van Hoff factor to be equal to three. Okay, but if, because it's only 50% dissociated, that Van Hoff factor is actually smaller. It's only two. All right. So then, what this would mean is that uh, uh, now when you uh, uh, plug these uh, values into the colligative properties equations, you are going to get changes uh, uh, to the freezing point, to the boiling point, and to the osmotic pressure that are greater than if uh, this was a non-electrolyte and it didn't dissociate at all. Okay, but still you're not going to get as much of a change as if this was fully dissociated. Okay, so this is a nice way to uh, relate uh, osmotic uh, pressure and, and other colligative properties to the degree of dissociation. As a matter of fact, something that is quite interesting about this uh, procedure is that by measuring uh, the freezing point depression or the boiling point ele elevation of the osmotic pressure, then you can actually go and back calculate what is the percent uh, uh, dissociation of a salt under some conditions of pressure, temperature, and uh, solvent that you have. Okay, so this is kind of a summary of what uh, colligative properties in electrolyte solutions are.